Welcome to the Real News Network. I'm Kim Brown in Baltimore. Demonstrators in Port-au-Prince and across other areas in Haiti were tear gassed by police as they protested the results of the presidential elections. The declared winner, Jovenel Maurice, who was a newcomer backed by the previous administration of Michel Martelli, the results are, are being contested by some of the other candidates. And to get us an update on exactly what's going on on the Haitian uh, front, we are joined with Margaret Prescott. She is the host of the Sojourner Truth radio show of Available on the Pacifica Radio Network and its affiliates. She's joining us today from Los Angeles. Margaret, welcome. Good to be with you, Kim. Oh, well, Margaret, the Washington Post is reporting that Haiti's provincial, uh, Provisional Election Council says that Jovenel Moïse captured over 55 percent of the vote on the November 20th election, thus avoiding a runoff. But obviously this vote is being contested as Haitians are taking to the streets to protest this outcome. So what have you been hearing from your sources uh, on the island? Well, first, to be clear, not all members of the uh, council, the CEP, which is the Electoral Council, signed off on this result. Indeed, three members of nine, a nine-member council, refused to sign on it. And apparently there was quite a debate that went on for most of the night, from what I understand, likely longer, before they announced this preliminary result. And one has to wonder why three members of the nine-member council refused to sign. The result of this particular election that's being called an electoral fraud by the party of Jean-Baptiste um, Aristide Lavalas, they put out a, a letter to the CEP the day following the election expressing concerns because so many of their voters were denied even the right to vote, and I could go through what some of those reasons were. But uh, there are two other candidates of, uh, uh, that included Jude Celestine, who, according to the Electoral Council, came in a distant second, uh, Moise Jean-Charles, who is a senator, who came in a third, and Maris Narcisse, they're claiming she came in fourth with 9% of the vote. Now, a lot of people are scratching their heads and wondering, how is it possible that in strongholds of Lavalas, and Lavalas, the party of Dr. Maris Narcisse, the first time they ran a candidate since the Jean Breton Aristide was deposed in a U.S. back coup, how is it that in Lavalas strongholds, um, Jovenel Moïse, who's highly unpopular in those neighborhoods, managed to win even in those neighborhoods. So there are a lot of questions being asked. A lot of loss, they have issued a, a document where they list a number of problems with the election, but also Jude Celestine and Maurice Jean Charles, they're also saying that they're not accepting this election result, that it is indeed an electoral coup with the candidate of the outgoing president, Marta Lee, uh, who, by the way, supported very much by the United States, uh, yet again allegedly winning. People are not accepting it. They've taken to the streets starting the day after the election, uh, even today. People were, again, on the streets in the thousands. The police are being very heavy. Three children were killed, including a three-month-old baby, because the police, they're lobbing tear gas right close to the entrance of the houses of people, and, and these poor children are choked to death. In Lavalas neighborhoods, people returning from protests are being beaten and brutalized, arrested by police for no other reason. So there clearly is a campaign of intimidation going on. Nevertheless, people keep taking to the streets and they seem to be very, very determined. There's a Jim. lot to uh, unpack here, Margaret. So le let's actually start with the person who has been declared the winner of this election, Jovenel Moise. Give us some background about who he is. As you said, that he was backed by uh, the administration of Michelle uh, Martelli. So give us an idea about, about who he um, represents and what his policies are, because he's a relative political newcomer. Is that correct? Yeah, and in fact, people didn't know anything about Moise until he was thrown into the ring, basically, by Michel Martelly. He is a banana magnet. He's known as the banana man, uh, very wealthy. One would consider him to be part of the 1% in Haiti, 
um, and uh, his uh, the what he represents and what he puts forward is a certain class uh, within Haiti. Haiti is very divided. Mo the vast majority of Haitians are impoverished, as you know. It's the poorest, uh, most impoverished country in the Western Hemisphere, and there are parts of Port-au-Prince, like City Soleil, that likely is the most impoverished place in the Western Hemisphere. Um, um, Jovenel Moïse represents uh, more of the business class, the business interests, good relations with the United States uh, State Department. And what impoverished people are saying, he has nothing to do with us. In fact, they call him the poisoned banana. That's a very interesting name for him. Does he have any sort of political background beyond no. his affiliation um, with, uh, with the, the party of which put him up? Yeah, the, the, the party called the ball heads, by the way. And Martelly is ball headed, and they also refer to them as pink heads. And Martelly does have a very pink bald head. No, he didn't. And that is, was what was uh, shocking to so many people who thought, well, how is it possible that this man could win? There was even a popular song um, that I heard all over the place in Haiti, sort of poking fun at the banana man. Uh, you could imagine, people could have all kinds of fun, you know, with, with bananas, but um, clearly stating that this is not somebody that they want. So, uh, again... It's not surprising that people have been by the thousands on the street protesting. Just today, people gathered at St. Jean Bosco Church. I, I want to mention that church because uh, that church was attacked on September the 11th, 1988, when uh, young Jean Bertrand Aristide was still a priest in that church. Um, it was burned down. Uh, scores of people were killed, and the Catholic Church never rebuilt it. But this has been a gathering spot. When the protests start out, the daily protests, start out, a lot of the time they gather at that particular church which has symbolism. And that community of La Celine uh, has been very much under attack by police, just general intimidation. One, the, the tear gas that was lobbed happened at 1 o'clock in the morning. People were not out on the streets at 1 o'clock in the morning, but the police were firing tear gas at 1 o'clock in the morning, which caused the death of these three children. And Kim, when I was there, the final day that I was there, I was at a demonstration where we were kettled in by, I don't mean just police in riot gear, I mean by tanks, okay, where you think you're literally on a battlefield, and police with very, very large weapons, and in fact, some people had to get me out of there to safety. I literally had to flee on a motorcycle, and after I left, uh, mind you, I'd never ridden a motorcycle in my life, <laughs> so I was hanging on for dear life. After that, um, some people had to be taken to hospital from uh, gas canisters that were lobbed at them by the police. So this is really what's, what's going on. And to have the three candidates who allegedly lost to Jovenel Moi say they are not accepting this result, that they know there was a lot of fraud that happened, you have to give some uh, credence to it. And Kim, when I was there, I visited likely somewhere between 10 and 15 polling places. And each polling place I went to, except for the one in Pitionville, which is a wealthier area and a lot of support for Jovenel Moïse and Martelly there, Every other polling place I went to, there were scores of people upset because they could not vote. This was their polling place, but their names were not on the list. And Lavalas is saying is they think that as many as 30% of their supporters didn't even get to vote. So when one looks at the, the voter turnout, and it gives a very, very low number, that 
percentage doesn't really include those people who wanted to vote but who didn't get a chance to vote. I think it's really important that you raise that, that issue because in some of the Western media reports, you know, the American media, Wall Street Journal, the Washington Post, they talked about the 20 percent voter turnout in Haiti. Yeah. And I was immediately reminded of the last time we spoke when you were in Haiti and you referenced that exact issue with people being denied the ability to cast the vote um, at their designated polling areas. So, uh, you know, you read that 20 percent voter turnout number, you think, oh, people just didn't show up. That wasn't actually the case. Yeah, people were very enthusiastic about voting. Indeed, I was really surprised that some people went to three or four polling places in order to vote. There was uh, one man that I might have mentioned the last time I, I spoke to you who was sent all the way to uh, Petit Gonaive, which is about three to four hours away in order to vote. The update on this man is that he got the resources together with the help of his friends. He traveled those three to four hours he left in the morning and he voted. <laughs> So that's a, you know that's one uh, success story there. But we also have complaints that for people who were sent great distances, most of them didn't have the resources to travel three, four, or perhaps five hours uh, to go vote. And we one of the the concerns listed by the parties that are protesting this election, they're saying that people were actually voting for them. Right. So that is uh, that's an area that we have to look at. And unfortunately for people from the OAS and the Organization of American States and uh, Western mainstream media, they go into the room and they say, well, everything looks pretty orderly here. People are counting ballots and it looks perfectly fine. But then if you start to peel away that onion, you will see that a lot of measures were put in place to get the result that unfortunately is a result the United States wanted. So do we expect more demonstrations and more people in the streets who are um, upset about the, the, or at least the reported outcome of this election? Do, are there any plans on behalf of the Level S Party supporters to continue uh, to not only dispute the election result, but to continue to protest it? Well, absolutely. And Dr. Maris Narcisse issued a statement uh, not accepting the election result and uh, saying that people will be mobilizing. There will be mass mobilizations going on. So that began the day following the election when results mysteriously, an hour and a half after the polls closed, were leaked, giving a similar result to the one that the Electoral Council announced in their preliminary uh, announcement. So you can bet that demonstrations are going to continue. What worries me and a, a number of people on the ground, but also people of goodwill in the United States and, and Europe and, and other places, the level of repression that's coming down. Uh, you know, a, a, a market was burned, a market run by impoverished women burned to the ground. They lost everything. They're, the young men that drive something called taxi motos, they're sort of motorcycle taxis, a number of their motorcycles have been burned. So there's also an economic attack on the sector of people that I suppose the powers that be feel are the ones who didn't support uh, the candidate that the EU, the United States, and, and others really wanted in place. So yes, I expect that protests are going to continue. This story is not over. I don't know what the end result of it is, but I do recall an older Haitian man coming to me with tears in his eyes and, and saying, we Haitians have been fighting since our revolution in 1804. We've never given up, and we're not giving up now. We've been speaking with Margaret Prescott. She is host of the Sojourner Truth radio show, available on the Pacifica Radio Network and its affiliates. Margaret has been reporting to us about the Haitian elections. The outcome has determined a winner, uh, Jovenel Moïse. However, uh, the winner is not being accepted by a good majority of Haitians. Is that an accurate statement, would you say, Margaret? 
I would say so, so given the vast majority of Haitians are are impoverished. And, and one of quick thing, Kim, I, I should mention is that on election day, Digicel, the company, the phone company on, on the ground in Haiti, but in other parts of the Caribbean region, they were said to be outside a number of polling stations giving people phone cards, the value of which was 250 gourds to 500 gourds, and the phone card had the photo of Jovenel Moise on it. Now, the district attorney in Port-au-Prince have called in officials from this phone company because, of course, that was totally illegal. In Haiti, there's no camp campaigning ends the Friday. Vote the voting is on Sunday. Campaigning ends on su on Friday. So it was totally illegal to be giving out phone cards to people, impoverished people, worth money with the photo of Jovenel Moise on that card. Yeah. Indeed, I'm sure we're, we're going to hear about more uh, types of I irregularities and. Uh, not acceptable methods of campaigning uh, as the story continues to unfold. Margaret, we certainly appreciate your reporting today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. And thanks for watching The Real News Network.